We're synced back up. Are we synced? All right. You know what this is, right? Yeah, I'm just curious at why it's so, like, looks like 1970 test equipment. Yeah, so this is a, it is basically, yeah. So this is a, um, uh, it's Innovate Motorsports LM1. That's, yeah, they were like LM3s or 4s now. I no, think. LM2. Two, well, uh, first of all, uh, the, the, the geniuses there put it in an ergonometric, easy to use package. All right, so, so this is, this is they're probably not gonna wanna sponsor us after I talk about this, but this is an extremely important and useful tool. It is not well designed in many different ways and uh, has been the bane of my existence. Uh, you know, is that the right phrase? Uh, well, it depends if your existence it's is- It's a bad thing. It, yeah, if your existence is based on this, then it is a bad thing. All right, okay. So this is an oxygen meter um, sensor um, tool. It o measures it measures the O2 tool. It measures yeah. the, the mixture of your car. If you have a carbureted car that you're trying to tune or jet, this is an essential tool. You basically plug this in. You take your oxygen sensor, which is ram it up the tailpipe. Here, run it up the tailpipe. It's all sooty and stuff like that, or whatever. Put so a, you run a little rich. Put a hose. Clean. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm running a little rich, guys. Yeah. I'll be. Yeah. Nice, I'll, yeah, nice exactly. tuning job, Wayne. Exactly. No. Meters right spot on. <laughs> well, yeah. Some things are obvious, but not always. Um, and then this is all the electrical. You see, hook it. Hook one to the to the battery, and I got a little hooks to the battery. Um, this was the first version of this tool. Here's an on-off switch and all that stuff. And it measures the uh, measures the lambda or the air fuel mixture right here. You want it to be about 14.7. We can talk for hours about that. Um, but you also want to test it under load. So you can't just use it as an idle. You gotta be driving. So you need to have like someone holding it in your passenger seat with like a camera. And, and a notepad writing down situation. I know, it's like a nasty, you know, It doesn't even have a data notepad. logger on no, it. What well, it does have a data logger on it, but as you can tell, it's not, hugely easy yeah. to use. So um, you gotta have someone with a cam, and this is the old version. So you have uh, someone with a camera looking at the dash, so you're going up the hill and you're putting a load on the car, and then you can figure out what the, what, the, what the jetting, and then you have to take notes and all that stuff or whatever. This is a good, other than putting it on a dyno. If you don't own a dyno, this is an essential valuable piece of equipment. So How did I ever survive 30 years without that? Well, your cars are probably <laughs> un untuned, but so, so me, I got some new cars with carbs. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm tired of this tool and all the problems that I had with it. And the connectors oh, are not well made. And like, it's like, if you, if you hold it on this, they come out the bottom with the power. So you can't like, you know, if you're trying to hold it up to read uh, yeah. it, uh, it really uh, wants to be upside down. And, and then, you know, it's big and you can't hold it. And you're trying to do this and it's, it's, it's like, and you, all the connectors yeah, are at the, the bottom, the, cursing the thing. So, yeah, the, so I the, bought the, the new version. And Did the new it, version is worse in many ways. And, yeah, the new version's over here. It's plugged in. We'll, we'll get some video of it in yeah, a second. Yeah, I, I, I've seen this brand, and, and, and it's not been anything that has interested me. And uh, I have some of this stuff, but um, not this particular brand. And um, most cars don't need it because they're computerized and have it all right, built in. exactly. Well, this, this is interesting. It's got ODB2 plugs. Again, the plug's coming out of the bottom, so they didn't quite... I don't know if anyone actually uses this. And so the screen is backlit, which is great for driving at night, but guess what's not backlit? The, bu the buttons. So it's completely dark and it's there and you're trying to like do functions and you're trying to drive and shift and all this stuff, whatever. And then you can't read anything there. So then I've got the little flashlight I hung here. Yeah, so, so it's like, ah, you know. They should just give that with the tool because it seems like you would need it. I don't but, know. Or, or let me just show this. Out. Don't test your car at night. But I guess you got no traffic. You can go. I've had a lot of problems with this one. It doesn't heat up the sensor. It gets stuck at 80% and then you can't reset it and it locks and you have to. Un and oh my God. Okay. So no on off switch. Okay. No on off so... switch. So you have to unplug it every time. Is and there batteries in there? No. Oh. No. Because, it, and then there's the instructions which I have over here, I they say... Hook directly to battery. Well, they say don't start the car without having this warm up first or, or something oh, you reverse. Oh, you your sensor. You don't want to ruin your you right. know, expensive Bosch well, sensor. Well, you don't want to, the Bosch, you have to warm it up, but then it says don't run it without this plugged in. So you, if you ruin the sensor if you, if yeah. you own it. So they don't, there's no on off switch, but they expect you to plug it in and unplug it every time you start the car. You plug it. So if it's installed in the tailpipe, you plug it in. So then if you're running it for a few minutes without it, it's like, ah! 
Uh, it's a useful tool. I thought I was going to get a much better tool than this one when I upgraded, but it's very frustrating to use. But oh. I still recommend it. <laughs> there we go. Oh, uh, uh, flux, uh, flux density. Capacitor. No, no uh, that, that thing from uh, uh, Ghostbusters where they can sweep for ghosts. Yeah. This is a coil on plug tool. See that? So you... You know what coil on plug is, yeah. right? <laughs> Oh, well, I don't know. You, know. you asked me if I knew how gears worked before. I... All right. Okay. You know, some people don't. I just right. ask questions. Dumb questions. Okay. Um, it's a pretty cool tool, actually. You just put it on top of the coil. See if it's firing? And it sees if it's firing. Yeah, it goes beep, 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 beep. Interesting. So it's like same thing as the timing of the old school. You, you know what a timing is. Inductive right? timing, yeah, right? Clamps on the yes, number yes. one. Yeah, yeah, look. I have American cards. They all well, you didn't know what this was. I, I, so. I don't have any failed coil on plugs yet. Right. Yeah. So your Aston's coming, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we can check. But anyway, so you take this thing, you put it on top, and it goes beep, 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 beep,
we used to use these in the lab and they were like the industrial kind and they were like 600 bucks and like, I'm not gonna, I don't use it enough to pay. But anyway, uh, in the recent years, Weller has gotten smart and they made this for about 110 bucks. So that's probably yeah. a good investment actually. Uh, the, the professional ones used to be really, really bitchingly expensive. And uh, this one was, uh, was the, about 100 bucks. They were, I am for like, yeah. The, for that's years, nice. for years, the, uh, uh, like I had just a soldering iron. Yeah. And it, you know, I guess it had a regulator in the tip or something. And they, they, they work okay. Uh, in recent years, like the uh, the heat sensors and these things are like one degree accuracy. Oh, fantastic. And uh, yeah. you just end up turning on really high and, and going to town on them. But, um, right. Well, that's exactly right. So you can adjust the heat. It's just I always put it on high. But the nice thing about this is that it uh, has a standby mode so when you forget about it it drops turns down it. doesn't you... okay so that's my pet peeve it doesn't turn itself off so if you like using your iron and you go to sleep next morning you come in it's sitting there in standby mode at 350 degrees but you're okay though because you got fire extinguishers i'm now. okay because i got fire extinguishers. i wish it would just shut itself off i have the i mean same 12 problem. hours later it shouldn't be you know and it's still in standby mode it sh and i haven't been able to figure out how i tried to put the standby mode down lower and it doesn't want to do that so I, and then, and then also it says on, on the display Not the here. temperature? No, it says the temperature too, but I want a big red light. That says on. That, it, that tells yeah. me it's on, because otherwise it just looks, and I'm like, okay, can I close the garage I have door? Done this. And this is, this is still on, oh, I hear and you. I don't want it on. So I have to like make myself a note if I'm using it with a post-it note to put on the, Door of the garage. Don't forget to, make, to turn off. Don't the, forget to turn off the soldering I have, iron. I have a simpler one. It just has a knob with the temperature on it. Yep. And then a red light and a toggle switch. It's not computer or digital. Yep. I don't know how many times I've like, you know, in bed going, uh, I don't remember turning off right. the freaking soldering iron. Right. And all I picture is cars, electronics, yep. all on yep. fire. Yep. So there are, there are solutions to that. So you can put it on its own power strip and then plug a red light Jeez. into the power strip. Right. And then you don't use this button here, but you use the power strip on the button there. That's, it seems like, that seems like a lot of it work. It seems like I really would just want a big freaking red light on the top here. Maybe even blinking, that would be okay with me. Just just have it right there, so that way I can, and then see the, the difference between this being on and off is that. <laughs> you go blind by that red, yeah. That, yeah. the sheen of that, the red. The sheen of the red, at least, at least they're thinking they did red, but. Um, that's um, really my only complaint on this iron. Other than that, it's pretty yeah, darn I, good. I like these too because they have the the combo. You got the, yeah. the holder that you're not going to get burned. But they also have the good. sponge. Yeah. Um, I have one with a sponge, and the other one it came with was a like it's kind of like a Brillo-y pad. Yeah. Gold. Yeah. I don't like yeah. that as much. I like the sponge. Yeah. Now, um, very useful. I, yeah. I, huge, I, for years, I didn't have a good soldering iron, and then I finally bought this one. Not that many years ago, maybe five years there's ago. A good, there's and a lot was, of good brands uh, like Weller. Um, the well it, is the best. It's like the gold chip. There's, there's blue chip. The, yeah, and the 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 thing is, like, if you're gonna do soldering, you're serious about it. Don't get a crappy soldering iron. Yeah, yeah. This is good. It's a good investment. Um, this will last a long time. I bought this. It's 130 bucks. I think it was on sale. This is a boroscope camera. I had one of the old ones, which was like a fiber optic kind of thing. I had the same. Look, it's got this. Yeah. Awful. Really long. Doesn't fit in any toolbox you own. Actually, I think it's over there. I won't, it's got like a, like a microphone gooseneck. It bends and all that stuff or whatever, and then you look through it and you can't see anything. It's just terrible. And then I bought this. And this is Buck Rogers technology again. This is a CCD camera, so it's not, even though it looks like it's a fiber optic thing, it's not. So there's a tiny, tiny, tiny camera. This is the size of an M6 through hole. So you can then drill. I had a fuel tank sender and it wasn't working so I removed one bolt at the tent there was no fuel you didn't in the, drill no a fuel, hole. there's no fuel in the tank <laughs> okay. no fuel in the tank I have one bolt and Be I safe, went down folks. went down through <laughs> the hole this is deceptively it's much smaller than it looks I mean you could look down anything with this thing so you go in through around walls and through find to find animals and rats and kids, stuff like uh, that tonsils kids ton I've done that too yes exactly a hundred percent so We'll shoot some video of this, but this is 130 bucks, and I use this often actually. Um, and it's more useful than most of the tools we showed today, or whatever. But it's got a good focal focal length and whatever, etc. That you know, it's got a good camera on it, and you can just go and look at this, and you can go inside, etc., etc. If you 
have a need for one of these, this is the next technology. And the key is to get the thin microphone. Yeah. It's got little LEDs in the front. Look at those microscopic LEDs. I can do that. Yeah, well, open your, open. Uh, you don't want to look at any of that. No, no, I'll do that again. Okay, never mind. Yeah, that, that's, uh, it, it works. Uh, we might get censored on YouTube or wherever tube. Yeah, yeah. So excellent, excellent tool. It's got video, camera, it's got a little memory card in it, it's got buttons and all that stuff. You know, I don't ever use that because I just I take a like picture. I feel like we could use this somehow on a test drive. I don't know why, how or where yet, something. We can probably run it outside and run it down below to see if there's a suspension problem. I haven't done that because I have a GoPro. I just taped to the bottom of the car, which does kind of the same thing. Um, the GoPro is a little bit more useful in that case because you can set the zoom in and out. It's got a lot, a lot of wide field of view and audio yeah. too. But no this, this view. thing, you know, here we can take a picture of Steven on the camera there and the car and the dog. And, dog sleeping. Yep, again. dog sleeping. There he is. Yep, I've used it on the dog. Anyway, uh, Teslong makes this 130 bucks. Last time I checked, Amazon. I bet there's a zillion knockoffs on Amazon too. I, yeah, I mean, this, I this, like that this, this one that works well. It's got the tiniest it. freaking camera. Yep. Okay. Probe is the, that's the word I'm Only about. complaint is this case. Okay. So the camera's great, but if you want to put it back in the case, you have to unscrew the camera like this and then pull it out, putting unnecessary wear on the thing. I just want to put the whole thing away so it's all still attached because the way the camera is set up, this thing. Oh, I know the perfect case for you. Paper bag, yes, shopping bag. Shopping bag. There yeah. you go. Save you. Uh, I'll take this case and use it for and something. Shove it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Shopping um, bag. Perfect for it. Yeah. You. Love this camera. All right. So another essential tool, which I don't use that often, is the uh, high school uh, micro microscope. <laughs> and it's just absolutely for like thirty bucks. You can get. I mean, these are like six hundred bucks if the school buys them, because school. School. You know. Like to get ripped off. But you know, for what? used ones like this, this is probably from the 1960s or 50s. Probably came out or... like a tuberculosis clinic or something like that. Oh goody. Uh, it's probably 80s, I would guess. It says made it in Thailand. It looks nice though, it's metal. Yeah, yeah. Sturdy. It's, 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 it's a good quality. Anyway, these are very useful for looking at stuff uh, you know, that you can't really see with your naked eye. It's got magnifying glass for the rest of the folks. Magnifying glass for the rest of the folks, but this is a step up, yeah. So I have one of these. I don't use it that often, but it's a pretty cool tool for 30 bucks or whatever I paid for it. It's actually been a good value. All right, here's another cool tool. Uh, back in the college days, an oscilloscope that had these capabilities um, used to cost like five, six thousand dollars from HP. Uh, this one's like about 180 bucks on Amazon, and it does twice as much, twice as much as those things ever did. It's pretty daunting. I know, like people look at these, go, oh man, there's knobs, there's settings, and no, this is just a very advanced multimeter. You know, you've got the multimeter that measures voltages. All it says is measure vo measure voltages over time. So that may be oh, quick time whoa, whoa, or small whoa. time. Or... Voltages over time. You're getting you're getting way ahead of the curve here. This is this is a complicated tool, Wayne. Uh, meter is good for most people. Prove me wrong. Complicate, uh, uh, prove you wrong? Yeah. Well, look, look, folks, buttons, knobs. Yeah. Uh, you already screwed up here. By um, the way, I, I have. All right, so so air, airflow, airflow meter on the 914. Uh, the 914 wasn't running too well, so um, ran a nine volt battery through the airflow meter. The airflow meter goes open and closed like this, and they get worn. So they have a little uh, potentiometer, which is a variable resistor. So they certain ohms here, and then when they go full up, and certain ohms. And the problem is that sometimes they get worn at different spots, and the, the signal drops down to zero, and that can completely screw up your car. So you basically just take the lead for the uh, from one, one end to a nine volt battery, one end through here, and then one end back through the thing, and then just go like this, slowly open it up, and see if it drops down. You see a little noise where the yes. where the dirt is. You can do that with a meter. With a meter. But it's you have to have a quick meter because the meter has to adjust right away and it's not as easy and you can't do it multiple times. You have to sit there with somebody taking a video of it or writing down because it's hard to do this at the same time. This is a useful tool for something like that. Don't use it every day. Use it maybe once every few months or whatever. But an even less useful tool is the function generator um, that we I'm have. surprised this doesn't have it built in because they have models now with the function scope built in with a function generator, frequency counter, every bit of it all built in. It's all electronic software. It's all I, the software. I feel slightly sheepish because you may be right. Actually, I didn't even realize that. That, well, may, that may that may that probably has this built in. Uh, you know, it's so my son, the... my son wanted to, to play around with um, encoders 
and 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 uh, and and um, test the encoders against the signals. So I just bought this for twenty bucks, on, or something like that on eBay. It was, yeah, like six thousand dollars, like you yeah, know, yeah. eighty in nineteen eighty from from Hughes Space, proudly made in the USA. <laughs> That's that in itself. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what year this is. It's eighties, probably. Looks yeah. eighty-ish. I kind can't. of like that style of that uh, uh, O2 sensor. Yeah, exactly. But um, but you're right. This function generator is probably built. But this just allows you to uh, do some um, some calibration and stuff as it runs. And Seems less useful. It's much less useful. But if you need it, 20 bucks. I, know. I don't really. But it goes, they kind of work together. So. And I have, I have some. I have a fancy schmancy one. I think it's by Handtech also. It's a programmable arbitrary waveform generator that uh, I've used to, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, I brought it because I bring these two together. I just figured I'd show it. Anyway, this is high tech stuff, folks. High tech, 1980s technology, sure. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> I'm gonna hurt oh, you. We've we've done a lot. Yeah, don't hurt me. That's probably a better way to put it. Uh, we've gone through a bunch of tools, Wayne. Yeah. Uh, let's. Oh, yeah, uh, there we go. Oh, see, look. That's a. That's, there's no noise. We'll get to these. There'll be noise when this flies off and hits you in the face. Well, or the windshield of one of your oh. fancy cars. That's. That's true. Uh, but that's you know that's a risk that you have to take. All right, that's enough on the tools for today. We'll have some more next time. Thanks, guys. Yep.